Well, 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 look what the cat's drug in. What's happening? Hello, mate. Yeah, um, plenty, actually. Yeah. <laughs> All sorts of things going on in the life at the moment. But, um, yeah, we've got to uh, welcome the little man on uh, the 1st of August. We had uh, little Harrison come into our lives. So um, nothing straightforward, as per usual. Everything went to shit and was... Yeah, pretty standard. <laughs> as poss- as hard as and traumatic as possible, but wouldn't be my life it did, if it didn't happen that way, so... Um, yeah, no, everything's brilliant now. Uh, everyone's happy, healthy, and we're, we're getting on with life. Uh, losing a fair bit of sleep, as well as the um, the renovations on the house, all happening all at once, which yeah, is fantastic. Yeah, got a sense of timing. But, as you can see, the timber in the background holding up a bit of the roof there, so the, <laughs> the, the roof doesn't collapse on me. But um, yeah, be good no, footage if it's it all does, happening at once. Fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Then, How are you, mate? Been a while since I've seen you. Yeah, good, good. Just uh, ploughing on. Uh, just quickly, apologies to everyone listening for the for the late show. Uh, just a preview this week. Unfortunately, Danon took the Parramatta loss last week. That bad end up in hospital. So thoughts with him. Uh, just delayed the game a little bit. So, but soldiering on. Just getting through what we what we need to in life. Same as you. And plough towards finals time. Hopefully, we can crowbar you back out for some finals footy at some point as well. Yes, yeah, down the road. Like, um... It's probably not as cut and dry as we thought it was coming up now. I think there's a few few different teams popping up at different times. So. No, definitely. What have you? Well, it's been what a good two months. What have you made of? Has been a good. Two the state months, of the um, NRL. Any any teams caught your eye? Anything drastic that? Uh, any teams you want to pen? Any, any takeaways? Hot takes? Um, it's pretty hard to pen anyone at the moment. To be honest, um, the, the Broncos look like they're well and truly shot now. Um, I can't see them having any chance at all of making the eight now, uh, as well as South Sydney. They've lost their spots realistically to the, the likes of the Cowboys, the Dragons. Who would have thought about the Dragons getting in there at this time of the mm. year? And the Bulldogs have been insanely good, realistically. Um, you look at, obviously, everything everyone said before the start of the season, and even start of the season, they did look a, a bit vulnerable through the middle there, but um, fuck, they've done a good job at moulding that team together and... Um, yeah, the defence has been outstanding. They feel like, to me, they feel like Penrith's next grand final opponents. Yeah, right. Uh, probably put in around that top four can, if the draw falls the right way, depending, I suppose, tonight's a bit of a preview of that. Uh, but depending which way the rest of the draw falls, I think they could they could knock off just about any of the top eight, I don't think. I'm not declaring them morals or anything, but they feel like that, that hot team that we've had, you know, the Souths, the Para, that we've had over the last few years. Wouldn't be a wouldn't be footy and froth is out technical issues. Uh, so, How good is it? <laughs> what else has caught your eye? Any other? <laughs> who's going to win the comp? I suppose uh, Penrith, Melbourne, Smokey. They're both obviously looking fantastic. Um, just the run of form recently. Probably have both teams in the last three weeks are yet to really show that you know that top class form that you rubber stamp them as the as the winners of the comp. Mm. Um, the dogs are going as good as anyone uh, realistically. If you could say it, um, outside of that, there's not really anyone um, like sh- sharks at their best will keep these teams honest, but they're probably not going to challenge them. Um, same with the Cowboys. Like, yeah, it, it, for mine, it comes from Melbourne Penrith. Or um, yeah, if the Dogs have an absolute belter, they could probably challenge one of these two because their form in the last three weeks hasn't been red hot. No, I I agree. I, I think they're the only three, and I. Would almost go as far to say Penrith might be morals once they get everyone back, but a lot of the, to if, Yeah, if, they, if these two teams get back to anywhere near their best, Melbourne and Penrith are by far and away better than any other team in the comp. Yeah. Uh, any players exploded out of nowhere? Any any punker calls you, that have caught your eye? Anything else? Oh, don't get me started. Preview? We're going to do two months' worth of punker calls? No, I don't actually, know. <laughs> we could just mention one name, I reckon, and we'd probably yeah. could get away with it. But yeah. um. Uh, we'll leave we'll leave that as it is. Um, obviously, Burton's gone to another level again. Uh, his his form's been fantastic. He's really evolved his ball playing as well, which is getting a lot more involvement in his outside backs. Um, Kiraz again, uh, it, it's probably really really slow start to the season, but he's really warming into his work at the back end of this uh, back end of this season. Well. Cleary was was never unexpected, but he came back with a bang, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the first game and a half, he came back. He absolutely had his hand, his fingerprints on everything that Penrith did in those games. If 
but has sort of missed a little bit. Uh, Munster's yet to find form, which is something that obviously Melbourne would be relying on coming into the back end of the form, back end of the season. He seems to be clashing a little bit with Hughes at the yeah, moment. Yeah, their spine's a bit out of whack, I feel. Yeah, which isn't great, but they're still disposing of most teams pretty comfortably. So, yeah. Um, Blake Braley looks really good when he's told to run the ball. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but the couple of times that they've been without a half and they've named him as a half, even though when he's played nine, he's obviously been given instructions to run the ball mm. because he's he's run it twice as much as normal and really created some opportunities for that Sharks team that didn't have a lot of um Well, I think essentially they – um, yeah, him and McGuinness sort of rotate, don't they, between the two spots and – Absolutely. And it obviously worked quite well from last week. Uh, there was a lot of um, a lot of good things through the middle there. No, going pretty dogs heavy, but Sam Hughes is probably becoming a lot more consistent. Um, be somebody to look forward to next year. A few interesting signings going through to next year, but um, mm, yeah, Val's gone to the Dragons. Jarrell Skelton's gone to the Tigers. I think that's a pretty good pickup for their outside back stocks. And Blaze Talangi officially has gone to Penrith now. Yeah, 100%. I suppose at a as five eight, but too, Dane Laurie's going as good as anyone this last month as well. But he's been very surprising, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> considering where he was this time last year. Mm. But, uh, so yes, am- amazing what uh, I suppose confidence injury in a system does for you. But yeah, that uh, system seems to do remarkable things <laughs> for just about anybody. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I think it probably is no one much. really else that's sort of taken the the game by storm at the moment. Really, is there? No, a lot, uh, of, a lot of teams just been going through the motions. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. and then um, it's going to be right. some really scrappy, ugly games, I would say, over this next three or four weeks for those teams all fighting out for, for that 11th to the 7th spot. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about that. Let's get stuck into tonight, first of all, the, the potential minor premiership decider. Penrith hosting the Storm, uh, who, Penrith, welcome back. Uh, Fisher-Harris and Dylan Edwards, the team lists haven't changed officially, but I believe they've both... Got through what they need to do today. Uh, no Liam Martin, no Scott Sorensen. So Mav Guyer and Liam Henry both start in a still a thinnish looking forward pack. Uh, Ellie Cattell is back. Uh, Trent Larero moves to the uh, back to thirteen, and Kane Bradley drops out of the squad. Faye Longo on an extended bench after the rest looks about the same after they yeah, they got I think it was seventy plus minutes out of Nelson last week. It was a, a proper blowout for him. The, Wasn't that a good performance too? Plan, I thought it was outstanding. I gave, I haven't, we haven't done a talk about it here, but I sent. I gave him three points in the. Uh, oh, you've sent him through to GT. Sent the, the votes through to GT this week. Just so I wasn't sure yeah. what was happening. Uh, sure. Wish Art still on the um, on the bench, but uh, and touch on any teams as we mentioned. I'm touch on any great performances from last week too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We mentioned Laurie and and uh, I, mean, I thought Biza was fantastic for Penrith last week in their comeback. I know. I mean, <laughs> I know he, we give him plenty of raps, but I don't think we still give him enough, to be honest. No. Well, well, He's but, got to be close to one of the most underrated players in the comp. The, the amount of work that the Blake gets through, the, how how consistent he is, um, and what he means to this team is uh, it's amazing. But um, yeah. Pappenhausen probably looked a little bit sharper than he has for a while, apart from throwing yeah. a, an intercept pass <laughs> to put the uh, put one of the uh, wingers away down the sideline there. But... Um, yeah, I, I think Jerome Hughes is the Deli M winner, isn't he? I can't see him get beaten, especially because any of those any of those Melbourne wins, he's probably getting three. Yeah, and uh, he gets the halfback privilege in those in those games as well. So there's a lot of them through the mi- the middle of the year where um he would some of his opposition three. weren't on the field. Correct. So, so uh, I would suggest if there was such thing as a market, he'd be fa- heavy favourite. Actually, the more I think about this. Yeah, as you mentioned, um, the, these benches look um, very completely foreign to me. There's, there's a few blokes there that you wouldn't expect anywhere near a first grade jumper at, at this time of the year, anyway. But um, obviously, injuries played its part. This at, game for me, I want to tip Penrith, but it's this kind of game that really scares the crap out of me, to be honest. This this is the kind of game that the the big guys from Melbourne do seem to stand up and do something out of the box. Um, don't be surprised if you see some. Some different sorts of uh, plays with uh, switches of play and some obviously there'll be a, a fair bit of targeted kicking, I would imagine, to the wings and the centres uh, from this Melbourne side. I've got a feeling Melbourne might just steal it, even though it is Penrith at home. Uh, a little bit more strength with the bench, with that bench rotation. 
but just as easily Penrith could win and win that comfortably. But I'm going to tip Melbourne one to twelve. I'm going to go with. Um, I think it might be time for Munster just to have one of those games where he he scores one and sets one up and he ends up with man of the match. And um, but I will go with Penrith to score first through Casey McLean. It's funny. Uh, a month ago we would have said, or well, six weeks ago, last time we spoke, I suppose. Uh, and we do occasionally talk when there's not a podcast involved, for the record. But do, yes. uh, both of these back fives would have looked pretty foreign back then. But Jack Howarth growing, really grown into a first grade. I thought he's been quite impressive. Uh, yes. Warbrick's had a, quite a good run. And Tungo had his best game probably all year last week. So interesting clash there. And Grant Anderson looks like a, a legitimate first grader for someone that I didn't think would get anywhere near a first grade yeah, jersey exactly, probably yeah. a year and a half ago. Yeah, he's fast, strong, just gets through a lot of that work as well. Uh, yeah. They Look, I'm going Penrith with zero confidence. Basically, I think they've won five or six of the last seven against the Storm and a blue yeah. bet. But, yeah, that back row leaves you a bit – when you really look delve into the player versus player, um, Smith, Guy, Henry on paper looks a bit thinner than Bloor, Katoa and um, Solomona, but they do get Fisher-Harris back in some form or fashion, so there'll be a little bit of a reshuffle. And Dylan Edwards is a big in. Are you expecting them both to come in, or they've been named as coming into the uh, squad, have they? I'm looking at the NRL.com. I believe late mail was this. They're playing, but uh, the NRL sense. hasn't changed. It does make that side look a fair bit different. And they, I guess there's probably a little bit of ducks and drakes going on um, yeah. given the situation of the game. So with that in, uh, I suppose Laurie moves to 14. Um and Lindsay Smith to the bench. Maybe Mav Guy back to the bench, actually. Yeah, Penrith 1 to 12. And we'll go with. Um, I'll probably give Nathan Cleary out of the match. He'll get the job done. Probably an interesting duel. Um, uh, and you give him the edge in a kicking, from a kicking perspective in a game like this Absolutely. over Hughes. First try score. I agree with you there. I think that, that sweet play out to to the Penrith wingers is, is their pet go to early. So to remove a first try. But. Um, Great match. Hopefully by the time people hear or see this, uh, it's up before kickoff. Yeah, the second row battle is the big one for mine. It's probably the reason I've swayed the Storm's way a little bit. Yeah, understandably so. I think so. there'll be a lot of traffic sent that way. But... Crashing at, um, yeah, yeah, it just feels, it just feels Henry very thin. Guy Henry Geyer and, and um, whoever else comes on to do the, <laughs> the yeah, interchange. Exactly. Friday night kicks off. The Seagulls hosting the Warriors with... Uh, we'll just have a look through here. Josh Alloa back. Uh, Nathan Brown goes back to the bench. As a result, uh, Todd Cooler is 18th man. I believe he's cleared and will play, but no word as to where. As of now, probably 14. Uh, Sean Johnson's back for the Warriors after their performance last week. Uh, Adam Pompey and Marcelo Montoya also back in the team. So much more, well, much closer to the team last year, I'd say. Uh, no Tamari Martin and Luke Metcalf got through reserve grade last week is on an extended list. So whether he makes a late appearance, we'll wait and see. Can you possibly tip the Warriors, though? Out of contention on the road is never a, never a recipe for success, realistically. Um, as soon as you're out of the equation mathematically and then, um, then you've got to travel, uh, generally teams don't go real well. Throw in the fact that the teams look much better without Sean Johnson in it, to be honest, for big parts of this year, yeah. <laughs> especially since he copped his first injury. They're going all right at the start of the year, but ever since he's been in and out of this team, they're much more consistent with him without him. And much him more direct, team. which was the problem. Yeah. Tamari and Chanel almost run first at times in attacking. Unless um, for some reason that the coach has got them all up and about and really intent on causing havoc and ending manly season, like trying to put a dagger in manly season, um, it would be the only reason I can see there being a result going the Warriors' way. Uh, too many points in this manly side. The one one issue they have had is their ball control during the year. Um, we know they like to use the ball, and uh, it does come with points, but it also creates a lot of opportunities for their opposition. Um, I think they've just got enough in them. Uh, control the ball enough uh, with the likes of Ola Kawatu doing some damage on the edge there. And um, how good has Lehigh Hapawade been yeah, over the last good. three or four weeks? Yeah. Jeez, that kid's got some footy skill in him. Um, just some of the stuff he pulls out with some of those flick passes and the way he manages to contort his body to get the ball back to his um, to his support players has been amazing. 
Talao's had a breakout season. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been some good footy footy played from this Manly team, but some yeah, some pretty horrible footy played at times as well. Manly one to twelve. Let's go, Tom. Tom, I think. Um, cool. There might just be enough open field in the middle there for him to cause some problems. And, uh, Man of the match, first try. I think you hit the nail head. I think we're about to hit this last month where these teams that are dead are now going to be cannon fodder for top four teams try, or top eight teams trying to get a lot of things humming before finals time. And Manly, they were patchy last week, but their best was pretty good. And I just can't – I can see them scoring 30 and I can't see Warriors chasing that down. So I'm going to go 1-12. to 12. Um, Same thoughts. Uh, let's let's just go Sabra first try um, and man of the match DCE probably just had him on points last week we'll go again this week Roosters and Eels backing up after their well Parramatta backing up after just falling short in one of the the great comebacks or great it's probably their best performance for the season wasn't it it was I thought so um, despite the part where they shit the bed at the end the um, <laughs> <laughs> they now cop Roosters off a bye which yeah. uh, has been a story the last couple of years. But their team looks pretty similar. Kelma Tualangi is back into the interchange, pushing Dury out. Uh, I believe Dom Young clear, but he has still has to get through captain's rung. Lindsay Collins will play uh, as far as I know. The rest of them looks uh, pretty much like what you'd expect. Uh, I've loved Rick Victor Radley on an edge there since he's moved there. Uh, I think Connor Watson's really opened up this team at times. Uh, but... Uh, Last week might have been their grand final. They're always up for Penrith uh, para, and I don't think heading to yes. Alliance to meet a fresh Roosters team is really a recipe for for joy here. Thirteen plus Chooks, uh, they'll put another forty plus a forty odd score on here like they've regularly done. Take your pick, Sam Walker, breakout year. Him or Teddy will be man of the Take match. Take your pick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> him or Teddy, man of the match, first try. Uh, Swali again. Yeah, just on Radley, I think um, being on an edge just calms him down a little bit. Mm. I, don't, I don't think there's as much going on, you know, around him, which maybe let, lets him sort of settle his headspace a little bit rather than having so so much crash and bash going on in the middle all around him. Um, he's able to sort of pick and choose when he gets involved, and, he's yeah, he's been good. But Watson's been one of the um, eyes of the season, realistically, Absolutely. for this Roosters team. Uh, some of the stuff that he's been able to provide with the ball playing, and I think it continues here. You can't see Parramatta backing up a performance like they did last week against Penrith, again into this one against the Roosters, uh, as I said, out of contention on the road. And I don't think they put another performance up like that this year. Uh, maybe one more, but you've only got a couple of weeks, para fans. They've, got, they've can, got Tigers last you round. You can get so back to next, sweet, next, next season, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the first 15 minutes, you'll know whether it's going to be a close game or it's going to be 13 plus. And yeah, I expect it to be a blowout uh, in this game. Let's go Angus Crichton to score the first try. Uh, they they love that little pet play short ball on the on the left hand edge there. And yeah, Roosters by at least 20. Um, I think just Joey Manu might just be set for to do something real special in this game. Uh, had a bit of a stop start season a couple of weeks back now, so. Go with him for man of the match. Beautiful. Super Saturday kicks off, uh, and it's another half decent Super Saturday. I wouldn't say great as, as it has been the last few weeks, but uh, Bulldogs and Dolphins probably game of the round or bar Thursday night. Uh, a lot to play for for both teams. Uh, and Jamin Salmon is back for the Dogs. He is in the seventeen, and uh, Mark Nichols goes out. Lachlan Hubner is on the bench for the Dolphins. So is Oren Keeley. And Sean O'Sullivan, uh, I believe, yeah, this Dolphins squad with injuries is essentially at the uh, absolute bottom of the barrel of uh, available stock, essentially. Although Trey Fuller, still on, um, Trey Fuller, Josh Kerr testing you all, all on extended benches as of now. We've been wrapping the Bulldogs. I, th- I think this continues. I think this is a real good uh, test again um, to try and just play the sort of explosive food they've played for the last three weeks against the Dolphins because they'll get into the grind and get through what they have to do. They, they have been getting out of jail or all but getting out of jail of Dolphins. I don't think they do here. I'll go one to 12 Bulldogs. Yeah, it'll be the usual suspects. A uh, big game for Stephen Crichton. I'll go for him first try. And now he's starting to find the try line as well as make others around him look good. Man, the match, Toby Sexton. What a month he's had as well. Um, that short kicking game's been on point. Uh, any short ball, his short passing game's actually been 
fantastic. Um, just really start to hum, being integral, as we suggested he might be all the way back on our season preview. So uh, good to see them going well. But I think they keep going here, the dogs, Barn. Yeah, um, Dolphins do have a habit of um, really winning games that they must win during this season. Uh, they seem to they'll go into a lull and lose three games that they probably should have lost, but then they'll come out a game they shouldn't win, but they have to win, and they somehow win it. So Generally, would not surprise the me if they, um, they jag a few extra. I think they'll really be pushing the, the points out here because if there's one way you can get these dogs is if you manage to you are somehow able to break their the defense. It's been fantastic and put a few tries on early um, and really make them chase. And I just got a funny feeling that they'll often sneak away with this one. Okay. I think you, the matchups with Farnworth and Crichton is fantastic. And there's one that I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be sitting around to watch. Hamaso has been a bit quiet the last couple of weeks. So I've, I've just got a feeling that he might really have a game where he sort of breaks things open. The dogs pack, you wouldn't have said it earlier in the year, but I think they've got enough to match this pack and maybe even be better than them at different points <laughs> during during this game, which, um, you know, we've just got to give Bulldogs fans confidence. I know I spent however long wrapping them earlier in the, <laughs> when we were talking about the, the season proper, but, yeah, I've just got a funny feeling they've been up for a couple of weeks and they, they might just um, get behind early in this one and, and start chasing and a bit of pressure comes on. Dolphins 1-12. to 12. Man of the match will go with Isaiah Katoa and um, I'll go with Herbie to score the first try. Herbie Farmworth. Beautiful. That does come from Bundaberg, this game, although it's a dog's home game, which yep. uh, could be interesting, I guess, depending on the, te- the climate up there. Cowboys and Raiders is the 5.30 game, from uh, also from up north at uh, Townsville. If a top eight team sacked their number seven uh, four weeks before a final in Sydney, wouldn't it be like all over the papers? But I barely mentioned that uh, Jake Clifford's now the, the halfback. Had Townsend on the outer uh, after last week. Just looking through the rest of this team, it all looks fairly stock standard. No Nanai, who um, is replaced by Finnafuiaki after his HA last week. The Raiders. Uh, have chopped and changed as well. Strange gone has gone to the centres. Adam Cook into six. K.O. Weeks at one. Seb Chris to the wing. Yeah, standard forward pack. But uh, I guess Ricky throwing some shit against the wall as well. And hope, I guess, last ditch hope of trying to spark something here. Tom Starling named to start as well. Good. Look, Raiders seem to, every week we get to the Raiders game and scratch our heads a little bit. 100%. This is no different, to be honest, no more I think about this. You got something for me? Well, two points out of the eight, um, four points away. This is a massive game for the Cowboys. Mm. Um, their form has been horrible recently. Uh, I can understand why they have sacked their halfback, but I'm not sure the bloke that they brought in for him is really going to provide anything different. Uh, very similar type player, so... Whether that uh, that does anything for them, I'm not sure. I feel like some I just point, think that, um, and maybe once they're out of contention, at some point you they have to try seven on Deedon, don't they? I would think so. Yeah. Even if that means um, drink water at six, and they bring back um, one of you know your, one of your Tom Chester's or who's the other? Does the plan? It depends on their plans next year. Like um, if you if, if they do plan well, on yeah. holding on to Clifford, then Clifford's more of a seven than Deedon, so you probably run That's this. This enough. probably yeah. is what runs out next year, but yeah. um. <laughs> yeah, funny. Um, surprising we haven't seen Adam Cook earlier in the year, to be honest. Obviously, that's probably got a bit to do with him leaving the club. But um, Ricky doesn't seem to be real keen on giving blokes a go once they've signed elsewhere. But yeah, okay. Um, I'll just fin- I'll be, I'll be a sec. I think um, there's a bit more strike in the likes of Drinkwater. He hasn't really fallen away while a lot of his teammates have done. Um, I expect him to probably be man of the match in this game and uh, create enough opportunities for the Cowboys to win 1-12. to 12 And, um, yeah, let's go with one of the wingers. Let's go with Tuolungi to score the first try for the Cowboys. I am going to go zero confidence. We're just going to tip Cowboys at home. As you said, yeah. they're now heading up. Raiders have to make the trek. If there's any hope in this season left, they have to win this, the Cowboys. And if they can get this done 1-12, to 12, uh, that'll be enough. 
a big game for Tom Dearden. He's been pretty good since Origin, so I'll make him uh, the match. First try, Kyle Feltz obviously making him, has always made a habit of it, so we'll go with him out wide. Uh, the one, the one um, caveat you'd say on this, obviously, is both teams here are now fighting for their life with this game. Exactly. Um, this is probably the Raiders' last stand, uh, and it's a big difference if they win this one against the Cowboys. And we know that um, teams under Ricky, they seem to fight extremely well when they're, their backs are to the wall. So not without a hope, the Raiders, but yeah. Absolutely not. But uh, the it feels like they are always half a chance, but. Yeah, absolutely. My little man's calling for me, so I'll need five minutes, mate. All I'll right. be back. Uh, the, oh, here we go. Tigers and Rabbitohs, they're next. 7.30, Campbelltown, I want to say. Yeah, Campbelltown. Uh, with Jareen Ball, the news came through that he's out for the rest of the year. I assume that means we are going to see Dewey or maybe even Heath Mason at one uh, on Saturday night, but no news just yet. Uh, safe fast starts, Porter back to the bench. Sione Fainu back on the bench as well, which is a, a nice in. Uh, the Bunnies welcome uh, Talis Duncan into the starting side. Jacob Host onto the bench. Uh, unfortunately, no Buller, who's probably been their best in this last month. Uh, means very little chance for the Tigers. I thought this was a game, you know, if you hold any hope, this was one you might be half a chance, but I can't possibly tip them again after having the poor foresight to try last week. I think the Ford's going all right. I think some of the backs are going all right, but when they've had 27 different combinations across that back line, none of them seem to work. So the defensive concerns out there are, are my issue. I think Rabbitohs might blow them apart. And I think this game, he's had a month where he's just had these little half breaks and sneaky ones where he's been chopped down. This just has Jai Gray written all over it, doesn't it? Um, getting a couple of hundred metre tries or just blowing up some open field space and uh, being the difference here. Uh, but... You know, Cody Walker probably put in a show with that bit of time and space. <sighs> One to 12 bunnies. I don't think they're particularly going that great, but uh, they'll beat these nerds. Man of the match, Jai Gray, first try. Yeah, Jai Gray. One thing that I have noticed um, recently is Dewey's been your one hope out there defensively. Yeah, yeah. Like, if he doesn't go back to fullback, whoever's marking up against Dewey, don't put them in your any time try scorer because he seems to stop that every bloody week that I've been betting. <laughs> I seem to put money on the wrong fucking centre because I put it on the one who's Dewey's mark and then he doesn't let him go anywhere. But, um, yeah, this game's about as exciting as that nappy I just dealt with. <laughs> um, I really want nothing to do with this game at all. How about the young bloke, Fletcher Myers? Um, let's go with him for first try score mm. for the rabbits. I, I agree with everything that you've said, mate. There's been a lot of defensive issues, especially out on those extreme edges for the, for the tigers uh, with the wingers and some of the iterations of the centers and that they've had out there. have just not been up to standard have been able to stop points. Not that there's a huge amount like Tane Milne and Richard Kenner aren't going to haunt your dreams. If you're a, no. um, a first grade center, unless you're but, a um, pot plant. You know, a couple of nice balls from the likes of White and Walker might be enough to, to send over the, the wingers in Gay Guy and Myers. Expect a try from each of them. And, yeah, Rabbitohs 1-12. to 12. Go with Walker, man of the match. It's one of those games. Jack White and loves bullying teams when he gets a chance. It's one of those games he might just run first. If he first gets up and, and run and he yeah, might score a couple of himself. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I've liked a lot of what I've seen from you. And just, I guess, from your perspective, a lot of I've seen – Going forward from the the Tigers juniors, they just a lot of them just need forty first get grams under the belt rather than yeah, hundred percent, mate. Um, you can't expect blokes to come in within their first, you know, twenty games of footy and and be punching out first grade quality stuff straight away. Yeah, yeah exactly right. There's definitely some some guys there with a decent skill level. Uh, how you put all the pieces together, it's um, that's up to the King Benji to work out now, I guess. Give him strength. Nominated into the Hall of Fame this week, actually, along with uh, Cooper Cronk, John well Thurston, Benny Elias, Les Boyd, someone else. Apologies to someone else. I just important. I've just about twelve. Of them, yeah, it's about twelve. <laughs> and, and I saw, so congratulations to all of them. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, Saturday Sunday kicks off with Dragons and Titans. What suddenly becomes very interesting after the Titans' performance last week uh, is whether we can even think about taking him seriously now with uh for the dragons though jack bird named at six with flanagan out i believe or will play at six toby couchman comes back in as does uh the two fainays oh, 
so they're both in the centres. Hammer thoughts with uh, Hame Sele, who's now dealing with yeah. uh, periocarditis or some other similar heart issue there. Um, won't play for the rest of the year. Hope everything turns out all right for him. Brian Kelly's back for the Titans. AJ Brimson goes back to the bench. Seems a little bit mad to me, but uh, Aaron Clark comes in. No Mo Fodawaka. Bo Firmo, I think, will play. I think he's been cleared from his shot to the uh, kidneys last week. Any hope for the Titans now going to... Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, Obviously, the Sharks played the Titans at their own game last week. They've been beating teams with enthusiasm and quick play the balls, realistically, um, getting their speed men off the back of fast play the balls. And they just couldn't gain any momentum. The Sharks were, were very quick with their line speed in, in defence and um, really went out of their way to just consistently roll the ruck through through the mm. Titans, which obviously leaves a, a blueprint for the Dragons to do the same. But I don't know if they've got the um, the leg speed in some of their forwards and and um, and the likes to be able to roll the Titans that way. Uh, if given a fair fair shot at the at, with the ball, uh, there's enough points in this Titans team to really worry the Dragons. Uh, this is a toss of a coin job for mine. It, it really comes down to which which um, halves pairing. Obviously, Flanagan's not there now, so I'm not sure where they go there. Um, maybe Bird goes into six. Yeah, I believe it's Bird. They just play him as an extra forward, and yeah. it's all comes down to Ben Hunt. Um, Jaden Campbell's been setting the world on fire up until probably last week, where he, he barely sighted the ball. Uh, I'm going to give the I'm going to give the edge to the Titans. I just okay. think they might have an extra try or two in them. I know the Dragons are fighting for their season, but Titans with nothing to lose and a little bit of extra pace out wide for mine uh, gets them the chocolates. So we go with the Titans one to twelve man of the match. I'll go with Jaden Campbell. As I said, he's been setting the world on fire and. I might go with a, a dragon to score first, though. Uh, we'll go with Christian Tui Pilotu to score the first try from the Dragons. It is a very, I think it's a very good matchup for the Titans in terms of sort of one on one outside back skill levels. It, it favours the Titans, I think, uh, and it's just what happens through that middle of the field. Like they're, they're, yeah, as you said, they're ruck and they're they're they were deplorable last week. Like too bad to be true, and. If we see similar again, I think we see. If we see similar again, I'm going to put make Tyrell Sloan yeah. man of the match. I think he comes away with two or three tries. If we yeah. don't, uh, I think Titans win and win well. Actually, more I think about this, which is a weird thing to say off a seventy point beating, but Dragons, isn't <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go Dragons at home, yep. one to twelve. Uh, I think just just, and I believe I don't know if the Titans have won in Wollongong. I, think I was reading somewhere earlier. Uh, oh, okay. They yeah, yeah, being at home at probably probably a packed house or to play for blah 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 blah. Uh yeah, one to twelve dragons. Like I said, I'll go Tyrus Lane man of the match first try as well. Uh there if that middle is that week, he'll be sniffing around for sure and certain. Hundred percent. And we wrap up, Sharks hosting the Knights. Uh and no change for the 17 with Braley play, staying at 7, McGuinness at 9. Uh, they'll do their trick shots again, like you mentioned earlier. And Trindle, Molotalo, and Hamlin Newelli, all a chance, all named in the 22. For the Knights, Dylan Lucas is back, and uh, Mapapa Lange drops out of the side. Young Fletcher Sharps, uh, oh, I know it's easy to say after four tries, but I think he's been <laughs> very impressive since coming into first grade, Barn. He's got a ton of pace, uh, yeah. ex- especially the acceleration over that first sort of 10 metres. He just disappears on blokes. And, um, yeah, for the, the the footwork with that kick back inside last week was uh, was something pretty special. But, um, yeah, interesting to see how he develops along the way. Absolutely. I think if those three that you mentioned, Ueli, Trindle and Mulatalo, are any better than 50-50, they play this game because this is really – they can cement their top four spot, I think, here. They almost have to. But – Especially if the dogs um, do, lose, uh, if there is a an upset earlier in the in the uh, the round with the dogs going down, um, they cement their top four spot here. But interesting, uh, the Knights are not without a shout. They really do seem to trouble the Sharks, um, especially some of the likes. Um, Dylan Lucas seems to play extremely well every time. He's only played us a couple of times, but every time he has, he's done extremely well. Uh, throw in Marzu, uh, Frizzell has just. For his entire career, whether he's at the Dragons, whether he's at, at the Newcastle team, he seems to tear his opposition apart when he plays against the Sharks. But um, 
yeah, some very interesting matchups. If the Sharks play the way they did last week with that um, constant line speed, both in defence and attack, which is what got them off to the start of the year and in, in such a good position that they're able to you know, lose as many of they have and still be in contention. Uh, if they play like that, they they we should win easily. Uh, the one thing again, it's a team with their their season on the line, so they're gonna you know they're gonna come out and throw everything they've got and try to score as many points as possible. Um, the interesting test again for the Sharks' defense. If the, their defense last week was quite good, and I expect them to be good enough to win this game anyway. Um, whether they do it comfortably or not is a different thing. Sharks one to twelve. We'll go with um. Braley, I think I'm going to give Braley first try. I think you might even be able to just scoot at the right time and get in there and score the first try out of dummy half, and we'll go with um, beginners, man of the match, making 40 or 50 tackles because I think they'll really target the Sharks' middles and and one of the edges. Uh, you'll be in for a fair bit of work. I am, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm to be Sharks at home, uh, and they're a team I've been off for a little bit, but I think they're starting to just hit their straps again. These last couple of weeks, uh, Knights haven't won at points bet in ten years. Actually, there's a stat for you. Yeah, right. They, it's one of those matchups that, on paper, I just it just feels like that. Um, I was just going to say it matches up really well. The more I think about this, I was going to sort of pot the Knights there, but it actually doesn't match up pretty well. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go with Sharks at home. I really like what Ira has been doing these last few weeks. Actually, I think he's been yeah, he's... great. Um, definite you know, high quality. First grade centre, uh, so we'll go with him first try scorer. But he's been making Stone Street outside him uh, look very good as well. Man of the match, uh, I'll come with you. We'll go McGuinness, get through that mountain of work and get the job done again. What's got you frothing? Yeah, just um, it, obviously it's, it's from now on, week after week, it's going to be the same story. All the, the twists in the tail and the story that continues with the, the playing out of the bottom of this um, top eight. Is, is currently what you've got eight teams trying to find a spot within that bottom four spots in this competition and um, well, probably bottom three spots now. I think the dogs are pretty sure and settled in there as well. So there's going to be four or five games every week that are going to mean a hell of a lot to the bottom of this top eight. And um, Yeah, I, I love this time of year just with, with the, everything that happens around all the storylines that go with the, with the top eight. Obviously, by the time most people see this, they've probably have seen the result from the Panthers Storm game. So I'll, I'm going to throw out, I think this Super Saturday might produce some crazy shit. Dolphins and Bulldogs just have, no matter who they play, seem to come up with something. There's always some twist at the end or uh, or a golden point or something else along the way. So I, I'm going to go with that as one of the most intriguing games. And it wouldn't shock me if that Raiders, if both of those other two Saturday games produce similar, all sorts of craziness out of Townsville and Maybe even out of Campbelltown as well. Thank you, mate. No, thank you, bud. Good to uh, chat again. Hopefully, as I said, we'll try and get you back when you can as we head towards yeah, finals yeah, time absolutely. and do um, maybe get you for a cheeky review here or there and give your opinion on a few other things. But uh, definitely once finals loom and hopefully Bubs is, you know, using a vacuum cleaner and mowing the lawn, <laughs> you can get out a little bit more. But all the best of everything. Good to see Perfect. you out there. Thank you, mate. And uh, we'll be back hopefully next Tuesday, potentially from the pub with Danon, if nothing else, and do it all again. Thank you, guys, and we'll talk soon.